Well, welcome everybody. Rev, can you hear me? She probably can't hear me. All right. Welcome, welcome everyone. Good morning. I'm sorry we had technical issues. Nervous, so I was sweating because I have somebody amazing coming on stage. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So have you guys all been welcome to Inner Jenny's Corner. Welcome to Get Sent with a Jenny. Today we are talking about how to be empowered. How can you empower yourself as a human being? Whether you're a man, woman, wife, husband, child, whatever you are, learn how to be empowered. We have an amazing guest coming in today. Her name is Reverend Rainy Bancole. I just met her. You know how you meet somebody and you feel like you've known them for years? I know. I know. You will get to feel her power today. She's such a powerful human being. She's such a force to be reckoned with. God is doing amazing in her life. She's just walking and just gathering people around her. That's how powerful she is. I'm so glad to, by force, be in her circle. Whether, I'm, whether she agrees or not, I'm in her circle. She, I'm, she's my big sister. I'm her little sister. Whether she likes it or not, that's what we are. Period. <laughs> she can call me 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I'm here for her because she's, you know how you meet somebody and they've already quickly just sown something in your life where you're like, ah, this one. If I had met her 10 years ago, we will still be friends. We will still be sisters. She automatically became my sister, not even friend, because of how powerful she is. So I heard her speak, saw her person, and I said she has to be. She's the kind of person I want on the show. So again, welcome to Get Sense with a Jenny, where we share nuggets to empower, educate, inspire, and hopefully motivate you. And the best thing you can do for me is get your pen, get your pad, and write down any nuggets and share in the comments, not just in the chat. Share. And you know what I've forgotten to tell you guys? This is the ninth episode. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe, like, and share. You guys just come here, engage, and talk, and you go. No, come back to the comment and say, I share, though. I love the show. I love the guests. I love the topics. And share your nuggets. Listen, in my business that I joined, it says knowledge is power. No, it's not. It's only power when it's applied. All right? So I'm here to serve. We're here to serve. Let me bring her on. She can introduce herself for you. I'm already having goosebumps. Let's bring in. <laughs> I'm just excited. I don't even have drunk. <laughs> Reverend <laughs> Renny Bankole. <laughs> Hi, right, to God be the glory. My name is Renny Bankole. Um, thank you welcome, so much welcome, for having welcome. me. Thank you, thank, thank you for having me on um, your show, Agent. It's been a pleasure. Uh, knowing you is amazing how how little time we've known each other and how much <laughs> we have in common. Come. Amen, amen. Amen. So thank amen. you. I celebrate you. Um, this woman right here is a resource. <laughs> if you find yourself stuck in the middle of the night, you call her. You will be answering the call. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being a force to reckon with, AJ. Thank you. That's so what I think you are. Thank yes, you. Thank yes, you. Thank yes. you. So I thank think you for I, agreeing. Yes, I think you know. Um, they say opposite attract, but I also believe that like begets like. Do you? I think so. I think right. so too. I right. Think what so I too. find is level, and there's uh, the Bible also says the deep calls onto the deep. Mm. Oh. So, mm -hmm. The deep calls onto the deep. So, uh, there's one of my favorite scripture. I use it for team building. It's Proverbs 27 verse 17. Whoa. But most times when we look at Proverbs 17, uh, 27, 17, it says, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Wow. So you need to find yourself in the right relationships Shapes. to sharpen you. Mm. Uh, there's something I, I posted a few days ago. I said, if they're not adding value to you, they're devaluing you. I copied it and posted it. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So if you come into a powered relationship, which is what we have, if you come into a part relationship, it should make you better. Mm. It should, for me, uh, my core is God. Mm. My secret is God. I'm a prayer warrior. I do everything I do through prayer. I'm based on scripture. So I live my life based on the precept of scripture. Amen. And so that's yeah. why every time I look at relationships, I look at what value this person is bringing to me mm. and what value I'm bringing to them. To the person. So it's mm. like, it's not very hard to figure out. 
you it's know not, and the next not. verse of that scripture proverbs 27 18 and 19 says he who honors his master will be honored he mm. will plant a fig tree mm. you know we eat the fruit of it i know the kind of business we are we have you know is 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 hierarchical i don't know if um even in the in the, in the typical office you have a supervisor manager director and it goes up the chain you know and so it says if you honor those ahead of you you also enjoy honor, honor. exactly honor. and others will honor you as well That's well well, well pretty much the same pay forward and you enjoy it amen. you guys already see she's on fire amen <laughs> you guys already see she's on fire see i don't even introduce her let me start with welcoming everybody welcome because sometimes we have so many people i stopped welcoming individuals but there's one person i have to welcome who came here first <laughs> and that is my mentor Vivian Igege. She's mm. here already mm. saying that she's excited to be here today. She's mm. always on my show. As busy as she is, she shows up, she gives her nuggets, she will call me and critique. Like Adrian, I don't agree. Oh. <laughs> I want to correct. <laughs> and I love that about her, how open and amazing she is. So welcome. She, I will welcome everybody else. I love you too, but in case you're watching the game. I welcome you in advance. So before we start today, I want you to first introduce yourself. Who is Reverend Rainy Bankole? A short introduction, and then we jump into why I chose the topic, or why we agreed on the topic, or how we got to it, and then you can start talking about how you know one can remain, we can be empowered. So introduce yourself first. Short, short, one minute introduction. I know it's plenty, but help us. <laughs> So I thought the show started, pardon me. It started, like, but you have to introduce yourself officially. Okay, I, I right, told you I'm so, powerhouse, so you're already coming with Big Bay. All right, I got so my like, pen, my pad. <laughs> Ren is, uh, Renny Bankoli, like I said. I go by Renny because uh, when I came to this country about 10 years ago, my full name is Omola Renny Bankoli. Um, most people say, how do you say that? Especially Americans. And I was just like, just go by the four, five, the last five letters. So that's how the name Renny came to be and also from a deep encounter with God, which I don't have time to explain today, you know, but I go by Rennie because it's a covenant name. So in case you're wondering, I've met people who say, are you South African? I'm like, no, I'm Nigerian and I'm Yoruba. <laughs> and then I'm also a Christian, like you see. Um, I'm a full-time minister. I, I was thrust into ministry because of challenges, um, especially in the area of my health. And so after I got delivered and healed, I found myself in the prayer ministry and I've been doing it um, full-time since 2012. I got ordained into full-time ministry in 2014. I'm married and I have three beautiful children. I give God praise for that. And um, our ministry is physically based in Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. So that's my short introduction. Thank I know. You. Thank you so much for that. She made it short and sweet, but she's a lot of things in one. She's always busy. She's sleep deprived, but she's so excited to do this thing she does. This thing meaning praying for people, interceding, delivering, all of that good stuff. Wouldn't you want to have such person in your circle? I said she's in my circle, me and me in her circle by force. You understand? We have not been, we have not known each other for two weeks. And we talk like we've known, like we're always on Zoom, like literally every single day. The day we miss, it seems like it was a whole week, right? So she's a quality person, and that's why I want her here. So, how did this topic come about? She were talking about something and she said something. And even though it was pertaining to a woman, I felt we all needed to hear it. And why did this show start? This show started by, I don't like pocket conversations. We have conversations as women or as a group. And then the world doesn't get to hear and learn from it. Somebody can get a nugget and it will change their life and all that stuff. So she said something. She said, a woman who is not empowered. No, you say it better. She said, a woman, you say it better. I don't know the other notes. <laughs> say, the woman who is not empowered and gets mad. See. <laughs> okay. So any woman who walks into marriage without being empowered has just signed up for a life of slavery. Moderators, can you type that, please? Yes. So when she says any woman who is not empowered and gets into a marriage, you are signing up for slavery. That hits me. Because a lot of women who get married at 21, if you don't have a job and all that stuff, and you're jumping into a marriage for love, there will be that frustration if the man is making the money. There's no, nothing wrong with the man making the money, but you just feel that confidence. Empowerment brings confidence. So that struck a chord in me. I'm like, okay, you have to come talk more about it. Whether as a woman being empowered or just as a person being empowered. So share with us how to be empowered. And at the end, we'll talk about, you know, share, share with us what being empowered means. Mm. Right? And at the end, we'll share um, 
how to be empowered, being empowered and then how to be empowered. If you're not empowered now, you don't know what it means. Now you know the meaning, then do these things at the end. Then I will share the nuggets for you. Okay, now I think I'm going to take you to court. <laughs> Funning me, but it's okay. All right, so we all know what it means to be empowered and I'm talking about um, vocational empowerment now. Now, many of us um, found ourselves in marriage because of love. Love is not in itself a bad thing. But I always say is that marriage, I always say it, I, I, I teach, you know, marriage from scriptures. And so uh, forgive me if your background is not um, Christian, but um, marriage is for two matured folks. And the maturity is on all spheres of human existence. When we talk about humans, we are spirits, first of all, because our father is the father of spirits. We came from him. We're spirits. We have a soul, that's our mind, our intellect, our cognition, our memory, the sum total of your, your thinking process, your decision-making process, your emotions, what you feel, you know, that feeling goes, um, that uh, woman. Butterfly. Feeling, yes, butterfly in your stomach, you know, when you fall in love. Mm. <laughs> and <Can't> then, <laughs> you miss your soul and your mind. <laughs> I mean, got suspended when you fall in love, you know, uh, your, 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 your reasoning faculty. And then the third part is your body, of course. And then when you feel love, of course, it will transcend into um, that hormonal part where you feel attracted to the person, chemistry is right and all whatnot. But let me tell you, um, if you're going to marry with love, um, they always say love is blind, but marriage is an eye opener. Mm. When you get into the marriage, you find that, that babies do not eat empty air. They eat formula. Mm. And then from there, they eat food. When the child is hungry, they can't hear anything, but they're hungry. So guess what? The parents come into the reality that they must be empowered financially to keep the babies going. Because if a marriage works well, children will come. And then there will be other decisions to make. When the child grows, they go to school. And then that's why you see in those formative years, those building capacity building years, when you start rearing children, there will be a lot of head bumping. Especially when married. Marriage is sweet. Right. Marriage, marriage is sweet if you have the right partner. It's supposed and to be sweet. Yes, yes, yes. Marriage <laughs> is sweet if you have the right partner and all everything, you know, all things being equal. Now, the question is, you must be empowered on all three spheres. You must be compatible on all three spheres. The question now is, are you spiritually compatible? Are you voc vocationally compatible, compatible apart from the physical or sexual compatibility that you both have? Because now you see, I teach um, a topic, I've taught it a, a few times, the marriage triangle. So according to Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, it says um, that two are better than one. Now we're talking mm -hmm. about empowerment. So please uh, forgive me for straining a little bit. But I wanted to you know, address it in the context of marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, marriage is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others. Hmm? And God at the pinnacle. So if you imagine a triangle, God at the peak and the man and the wife at the base. Now, the connecting triangle, you must have three things. Communication. Communication must be good. Mm. You must have intimacy or sex. Mm. S-E-X must be good. Will. And you have right. money. Money, money, money. Now, if the person is physically mature, emotionally mature, they have the sex part going. But vocationally, if they are not where they ought to be, the money aspect will be missing suffer, suffering, suffering. and then that love triangle becomes warped do you see now and then communication when there's tension in money <laughs> if it's the wife that is empowered the man is not empowered it will always seem as if there's a well, there's something going on there's tension towards that area of deficit and it could yeah. be violent. so i believe that marriage should be an all-encompassing um, maturity you must both have something to offer to bring to the table now, I don't, I don't mean to say that people who are not married shouldn't be empowered. Every one of us should be empowered. I teach a lot of singles and I explain to them, be the best version of you. Make sure you're building yourself such that when you meet your spouse, you have something to offer. Awesome. Some people are waiting for marriage so that they put their life on hold. And say, so when I marry, I'll do this. When I marry, I'll do that. You can be empowered today. Mm. Empowerment starts with knowing God. I personally, like I told you, my core is God. Empowerment for anyone is knowing God. You know, discovering who you are in God. Falling in love with God. Falling in love with you. 
Then when you have enough of God, you know the Bible says God is love. When you have enough of the fullness of God in you, and you are falling in love with who you are. So it doesn't matter when it, when the person comes is, is rugged or nice. <laughs> you know enough to be you know, confident in yourself. But most of us don't get to that point of maturity. In fact, oh. some of us discover it in marriage. And then you find out that you appeared with the wrong person. Far be it that, you know, the other person is not willing to work. One thing I found out is that most people are evolving, especially those who pursue, you know, destiny. They're evolving, but the other partner refuses to grow. And then it becomes... You or know, don't know how to. I don't think it's a refusal. It's that ignorant way of... Some people don't know growth. They are just mm -hmm. living. You know that, right? Okay. Some people so, are just living. They don't know growth, but go ahead. Sorry. But you know, we could... We could um we could debate this all day long. So one person is growing, the other person is not growing. There will be tension. So you see that all parts, all component parts have to work. So communication, communion with God and man has to be good. Mm. For whether the man or the woman, you must have that relationship with God. The Bible says God is spirit, and those that relate with Him or commune with Him must do so in spirit and in truth. So if that communion with God is missing, communion with, with the spouse may also become tense and difficult. Yes. You know, when intimacy with God is missing, intimacy is yada. When intimacy with God is missing, it will be hard to have that yada of intimacy. Do you know what intimacy means? Intimacy. Transfer. Ah, That's what Moderator, that did you hear? Intimacy. Into oh, God. <laughs> intimacy. Genesis 2.24 says that for this reason shall a man leave his father and his mother. And, and leave. Oh. And join, cleave, be joined to his wife and the two of them will be one flesh. So there's a level of maturity needed to leave and then to cleave. Cleave in the old King James Version. The newer version says to be joined. And that's oneness. That's perfect oneness. Now, the empowerment must start, like I said, with God, with the individual. And then what they get from God and personal development they bring to the table. Sometimes the maturity happens before marriage. Sometimes it's an on, ongoing process. And I believe the day you stop growing is the day you start dying. Dying. Then Everyone must grow. Like, I have all kinds of topics. A lot of people want, you know, any area of their life to work. Okay, now I said that we're, 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 we're humans of three component parts. Spirit, soul, and body. Now, if any area of your life refuses to grow, whether it's spiritual or the soul fickle realm, look at the soul now. The soul con um, consists of the intellect, um, your, your memory, your cognition, your ability to think, your memory, your experience, your intellect, you know, that's what we take to school or to work, your intellect. That area must keep developing. Some people now want to be empowered financially. So when we talk about empowerment, I already dropped on a little bit, I dropped a little bit on marriage. Now, empowerment, financial empowerment. You, you see people want to be rich, but they've not bought the first book on, you know, growing, thinking and growing rich. Think and grow rich. See, that's one book right there. That covers so, man. Yeah. That covers, you know. So empowerment is just making yourself, uh, in a nutshell, the best version of who God called you to be. Woo. Empowerment is just power. Moderators. To destiny. Oh. Empowerment is the power to fulfill destiny. So are you empowered? Do you even know who you are? Have you discovered you? Because until you discover you, you cannot you cannot fulfill destiny. So that's the reason why a lot of people are struggling with themselves. And so every area seems like a struggle. Or whoever they're in partnership with, whether they're in partnership with someone in business or in marriage or family. You see how sometimes you have sibling rivalry. Some are thriving, some are not thriving because some people chose to embrace, you know, their struggles and go and pay the price. And so that's you can apply, you know this to end almost anything so the, the truth about empowerment is you know um just making it work for you like um financial empowerment now i said any woman who comes into marriage and is not financially empowered i sign off for a life of slavery i've been there i came into marriage of course with a with a, with a educated i have a master's degree and all my husband has the same you know, but when it comes to financial empowerment, some people are more empowered. Like most times the women are the caregivers. I ended up being a stay-at-home mom for like seven years with a master's degree, my citizenship and everything. I was a prayer warrior. And so you imagine all things were going for me. But you know, I found myself stuck at home with the children. I was not empowered. 
Now you want to make major decisions. I want to buy a home. <laughs> Even though you know the home that works for you and your family as the home maker or the home keeper, but you don't have financial empowerment. Guess what? Your opinion is not valid. Your opinion is very silent. <laughs> I've seen it. So that's what, what I mean by coming empowered. Mm -hmm. And how can you empower yourself? Even in that, my seven years of not working, I kept studying. I kept praying. I kept seeking. I kept finding. And at the end of the day, the Bible says if you do not give up, <laughs> you will reap the reward, right? Mm -hmm. You will enjoy, you know, the, the, you will taste success if you don't stop growing. And so I found myself in ministry. One day the Lord just told me, embrace your destiny. I said, what destiny? As a cleaner, um, <laughs> babysitter, suffer. And he said, embrace your destiny. And then that was how, you know, I started in a matri prayer ministry. And today, I thank God that it has birthed several other um, ministries or businesses or seeds that I carry. Um, amen. And, that, and that's what I have for now in a nutshell. How do I even combat that? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. that's, that was filled with lots of nuggets. I mean, people in the comments are saying, oh, my God, because... There's one that you said I wrote down. I have to type it. It says intimacy. I have never heard that. What intimacy? Because in the layman's term, intimacy is just sex. Ah. So please, like what you, everything you said made a lot of sense. I have to go back and watch it because there's a lot of nuggets in what you said. And I see the importance of being empowered because I, I believe empowerment brings success and then you said something empowerment is power in fulfill your destiny fulfilling your destiny a lot of people don't know what their destiny like they don't know what they're looking forward to mm. right mm. so when you say be empowered there's that's when you say okay this is what empowerment means a lot of people adults have no idea what they're working towards mm. but the depth of what you said is once you have god then there's that direction that god gives you now, not everybody who come here is a Christian, but they have some religion or no religion, and maybe they believe in God or not. But in summary of what you have just said is you have God first, and then you seek him, and then he directs. It's in the Bible, you seek him, and then he directs your path. Yes. We know that, though. We all know that. But how many people really go after seeking him and wanting to be directed and all of that? But I think there's so much nugget in what you said. I'm trying to get it all together to ask my next question. So if empowerment means the power to fulfill your destiny, shouldn't you know what the destiny is? That way you can have the power to. So how would people know? This is a, this is like digressing from what we're talking about. The show is 30 minutes long. It never is 30 minutes. But I don't want to keep you for too long. But how can people know what their destiny is? That way they can... I don't know how we can connect it. If you're not... Okay. If you don't know where your destiny is, how can they find it? How can they find a way to know what their destiny is so that they can have the power and in general be empowered? I don't know if that makes sense. It does. Okay. And um, I, I've, I've, I've come across this question in one form, shape or the other. Okay. So everyone who comes to the world comes with a destiny. Mm -hmm. I love destiny. I teach it. Okay. Um, Miles Monroe said the greatest strategy tragedy on the earth is not death the biggest tragedy is living a life without a purpose mm. so purpose in essence is why does something exist and he gives he gives several analogy for example um you cannot use um a, a ceiling fan you cannot use a ceiling fan like a table fan do you understand a ceiling fan is meant to be hung up on the ceiling and to, you know, circulate air in the room. If you try to use it as a table fan, it's abused because it will probably break the table or even hurt you or will be flying all over the room. So that is abuse. So purpose is, in essence, destiny. Now, Jeremiah 1, 5 says, before I formed you, I knew you and I ordained you. So everyone, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, has an ordination from God. Yeah. Even those of us who mentors, pastors, apostles poured oil on when we came to the earth, we're not ordained by men. We were yeah. ordained by God. What they are just doing is activating the ordination you carry inside. 
So purpose or destiny is what you came wired with from God. So if you want to discover destiny, I think the best place to start is to go back to the one who sent you here. Mm. And ask him, the way to ask is prayer. People, I debunk prayer a lot. Prayer is conversation. Prayer is talking to God and him talking back to you. Every one of us have a way we talk to God. It's not shouting. It's not until you kneel that you pray. But you may have a posture of prayer. Some people have a sitting position. Some people have a kneeling position. Regardless of what, you must make that connection with the Father of Spirit and he will no secrets to you. Now, Jesus is a perfect example. When he was going to kick off his own destiny, he knew who he was anyway. But when he was going to activate destiny, what did he do? The Bible says clearly in Matthew 3 and Luke 3, he was baptized by John and immediately the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And after that, he recruited his disciples. Go read it. I'm a teacher of the, the word. Go read it. When I got stuck at the point in my life in 2010, I was jobless. <laughs> it was almost like aimless. Like I told you, seven years of sitting at home with the children. And I was like, God, how do I even discover my purpose? Because he said, embrace your destiny. I'm like, where does destiny? I went to my pastor and said, Pastor, if you have a, a, a sense of calling, like you have a calling on your life, where do you start? My pastor just gave me a very intelligent answer, but he helped me. He said, go and articulate it before God. I said, this man has complicated <laughs> issues for me the more. Like he said, go articulate it before God. I said, articulate it. I said, and I took that away. That was 2009, December. I started a 40-day fast. Mm. Because I just went back to the Bible. I'm like, okay, where do I start? I said, a personal fast. It wasn't a reading fast. It wasn't any church that called the fast. I called the fast for myself. That was my own starting point. Anybody else can choose their own path, out their path to God the God they believe in. I believe in Jesus Christ. And I went back to the Bible and I was like, how did Jesus activate destiny? And that was how I activated destiny. I fasted and prayed and he began to tell me, believe it or not, over the course of 40 days, I had almost, um, almost 30 pages of instruction. I still have it on my iPad. He told me to reconnect with people. He told me to um, go find specific people. I didn't even know that we end up ordaining me in ministry four years later. He told me to re reconcile with people. He told me specific things I will do. He told me books I, I will write. I've written to the glory of God, 10 books all available on Amazon today. He told me things that I will do that look like meaningless at that time, but they've all come to pass in one way or the other. He also told me that um, I'm a Daniel. I'm called to nations. He also told me that I'm a woman of substance. At that time, when you are broke, and you have nothing. I tell my woman no source, and they're like, "Yeah, right." I'm a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. I've been selling things since I was in college. Okay, so he told me a serial entrepreneur, and I give you the mantle of Joseph. All of this I discovered on the altar of prayer. Mm. Now, to make it simple for beginners, some of you may have heard in Bible study those who are familiar with church, or you could just search the scripture, Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse one to three is the parable of the wise and foolish virgin. Verse fourteen. So I think verse 28 talks about the parable of talents. And you may have heard or, or, or heard it taught or read it in scriptures that he gave each one of them talents according to their several abilities. So now when you are looking at destiny or purpose, is the ability to do stuff. You can say, I, I can talk for a living. God gave me the grace to talk. I don't find words before um, I speak it. It's just like bubbling it from flows. inside. It's just coming from inside. That is a gift. And I celebrate it and not take it for granted. Do you understand? Some of us need to develop our speaking gifts because that is your talent. I'm an edifier, an exhorter. I'm an encourager. If you're looking for a female banner, bar, that's who I am. I will encourage you to do anything. I remember I was an usher in my church a few years ago. They always make fun of me and said, oh, she can sell water to a fish. <laughs> I will just help you get there. Do you understand? Because it's part of my call. But I knew that I couldn't just be talking rubbish. I had to fill myself with substance because garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. So that is honing that or taking responsibility for that talent. Some people open their mind, you run away. Some people open their mind and you just want to keep writing. Because over the years, I have, you know, honed, H O N E, not O O W N, you know, mm -hmm. I've owned it and I've also honed, honed it. I sharpened that skill. Now, when David was being described before the king, they said, I found David, the son of Jesse, 
a Bethlehem might skillful in music. So are you skillful in your talent? Mm. But the difference between being gifted and being skillful. Skill Ooh. is gaining the skill to do it better, to present a good, a better version of yourself. Remember, I started saying empowerment is the power to fulfill destiny. Now, is skillful, prudent, prudent in speech. So when you're talking, are you prudent in speech? Are you just opening your mouth and talking trash? So for those who have the speaking gifts, now some people have the singing, singing gifts. I cannot sing to, to save myself, but I sing in the shower. Do you understand? I know that if you are told me to... Oh, we pause for a second. To watch the so I already know... Okay, I've done voice training classes. But I still not brought out the singing gift. I know I'm not gifted in that. Gifted area, in so I struggle in it. Do you understand? Knowing you, discovery purpose, and understanding destiny is knowing your limitations and knowing your strengths. Focus on your strength and leave your limitations. I'm not saying you shouldn't develop it, like you heard me say. I'm still doing vo vocal training, you know, breath control classes, all those things to make my singing better. Maybe, maybe in the next few years I'll release an album. <laughs> But right now, today, I know singing is not my strength. Amen. But what is my strength I develop? I'm also a writer. Like I said, mm. I've published and written 10 books or, or, or more. You know, I'm working on some more. You know, so honing uh, that gift is discovering um, your talent. Now, whether you like it or not, you are going to give account of that talent. Now, that parable of talent said there were three of them. He gave five to one. I think I'm one of those people who have multiple talents. And some people who, who have multiple talents, in, in my little experience in ministry, I found out that they're the most confused. They're like, okay, I'm good with colors. I'm good with decoration. Does that make me an event planner? Oh, I'm good with cooking. If I make meat pie for you, tell me, hey, I want the patent to die on meat pie. <laughs> I'm good with baking. I'm good with cooking. And I've, I've seen people eat my food. I'm like, ah, we should try to do something with this, your cooking talent. Or maybe we should start, um, uh, we should start a restaurant. I'm like, okay, how many things do you want me to do? Do you understand? So that sometimes when you have multiple talents, but you must find the one. For me, I found my own one talent is prayer and exhorting and uplifting people. And every other thing follows suit. That kind of flows, yeah. Do you understand? Like the woman of substance thing. Um, I was going to share from Second Kings 4. If we have time, I will share it in closing. But one thing I discovered is, I found I was a woman of multiple parts. So that it became difficult to understand who I was or what was. destiny was. When everyone is, you know, praising me in this area, I'm running there. I, I used to MC events. Can you imagine? Wow. Just in the time I was trying to discover destiny. And then when I discovered purpose, and people invite me to, to MC their events, I'd be like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a minister. I cannot do. Because I now awesome. know. Because no. purpose guides your path. When oh, you, moderators. You have, yes. You will not abuse destiny. Remember my illustration starting... Was a standing fan is different from a ceiling fan. Mm. If you try to hang a standing fan in the ceiling, you have a problem on your hand. That is abusing the purpose of that thing. So the same thing with me, the same thing with anyone, you know, listening to me today. You must discover who you are. Just because you're a fan doesn't mean you're a ceiling fan. Mm. You do not copy anyone. Find your own path. Discover your purpose. Now, these three um, people that were given talent, one was given five, the other was given two. And one was given one. I believe the one who has the easiest is one. For example, if I if I if I say a name now, you will tell me what that person is. If I say Sinat, what do you hear? If She's I say Nat in the party, yeah, what do you yeah, hear? Yeah. So we know that their core gift is singing. That's one. But out of that one, I'm sure it has brought so many other things. things I think yeah. the easiest, the one who added the easiest of those three to figure out what destiny is who? The one who had one. But guess what? He was the one who went to bury it. Because he lacked wisdom. Yes. He didn't know how to activate destiny. Then the one that had to, you see, even though he may have been confused, is he singing? Is he entrepreneur? You know, is he entrepreneur? Is he uh, entrepreneurship? Is it ministry? But he had to. The Bible says he multiplied and he, he got four. four. The one who had five multiplied and got ten. ten. And that is what happens with giftings. That's what happens with talent. That's what happened with, so someone may be looking, okay, this is a little um, high level information you are giving me. The question I want to ask you, what do you love to do? Mm. Some people love to sew. They love to sew more than anything. 
Some people love to read. Okay, so if you're a reader, guess what? Behind every reader is a writer. Because garbage in, garbage out. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth. The mouth if you sow, you will reap. If you sow a seed, so if you sow reading, sow a seed, you guess what? It will multiply and come back to you. Come back to if you. you're a good student, you become mm. a, an influential teacher. Yeah. If you're a good follower, you become an in, 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 impactful leader. Yeah. So discover that small seed of talent. Mm. That which you do flawlessly. I don't have to go to school to speak. I can speak it. Sleep. But I didn't just want to speak trash. Do you understand? And I could go over every single area of gifting of my life. But I think the illustration I give is clear enough. It's so fine. find what you are comfortable in. And you yeah. start with God. Ask him, who am I? What have you sent mm. me to do? What question am I called here to solve? Every one of us has a question that we have been sent here to solve. And the day you discover that question, the day you become a solution. Now, mm. close with this. Romans 8, 19 says, the earnest expectation of creation, the world is waiting for you. Mm. The, the world is your stage. The, the, the global arena is your stage. Every time God calls someone, he has a global view. Okay? So he says, be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, locally, in Judea, Samaria, neighboring, you know, you know, you're spreading impact. And then to the ends of the world. So your talent is not just for you. For you. It will not just give you joy when you discover talent. It will benefit the world. And so that's why you must grow in your gifting, your talent, or destiny, whatever way you want to call it. Discover it. Own it. Own it. Discover skills in it. You see, some people are skillful in business. Some people are skillful in singing. Some people are because they spend time learning that thing. I'm a student of books. Buy books. Read books. Some people want to marry or want to try thrive in their marriage. And they've not bought the first book in marriage. Buy books. The Bible says, I, Daniel, understood by books. Now, Romans 8, 19 says, the earnest expectation of creation, the world, is waiting for you to mount your stage. Mm. more prepared you are for destiny the more ready you are to take the stage so say, that, is, say, say that again, say that again. <laughs> the more prepared you are the more prepared you are you know in destiny or your gifting the more ready you are to take the stage mm. the more mature the more empowered you know we've been using all these words interchangeably since we started you know today so when you're empowered in a particular area, you already take the stage. That's why when someone like Nathaniel Bassi took his saxophone, or is it the trumpet he blows? Or what, 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 Sax, what one of them, sax. sax. Yes. Yeah, and he came on, um, on social media in, in 2020. I think that was when he started the Hallelujah Challenge. The whole world came. Because somewhere in the secrets, he had been preparing. Okay. Luke 180 said that, that John the Baptist... He grew in wisdom, child grew in wisdom and, and stature. He worked strong in the spirit. And he was in the wilderness to the day of his showing forth to Israel. Every one of us, we have our wilderness. A day of preparation. A day of, you know, honing the skills. Developing it. Increasing his skillfulness. And then one day, opportunity means preparedness. And the world is your stage. Yes. That is what empowerment is all about. She has, she has, she has, she has answered the future questions, previous questions, and any questions that are coming up. Thank you so much for that. That. So what I was going to ask at the end, it's kind of inside. If my moderator can wake up and type everything, that way we have the nuggets and we can just review it because we're already like eight minutes ago. There's a yes. question there that I wanted us to address. Thank you so much. It was detailed. I have to go back and watch it. And I'm trying for us not to get uh, one hour. So let's say we we'll do um, maybe. Was it was five maybe 42. We'll stop here, like maybe in five minutes. Right. right. Five minutes we can stop. So there was a question in the in the um, chat that was it says, So what area should a woman be empowered in before it's okay to get married? Okay, so like I was saying before, spirit, soul, and body. Um spiritually have that intimacy with God. You know, the Bible says in John 4, 24, it said, God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, you must be born again. In my own mm. Christian terms, you must yes, be born again. Okay. Develop right. yourself spiritually, and don't stop growing. The day you stop growing is the day you start dying. Okay? So, you are tripartite. You are a three-part being. So, spirit, 
soul. So now in the soul, you have the cognition, the intellect, and um, the will and emotions and all that. Okay. So develop yourself emotionally. There's something they call emotional intelligence. Um, it's just that, that has been coming up so many times. There's a book about it as well. Yes, yes. I actually have. And one can Google it. Yes. Right, right. So emotional intelligence is just discovering your emotional core and being able to read and design. The, the, the book doesn't call it designing, but that's what I use, you know. It's just being able to design people and operate with them emotionally, emotional, make emotional connections with people, okay? So emotional intelligence, emotional stability is very important. You must be emotionally mature to go into marriage. Everything can move you. I remember uh, a wise man once said, that if everything moves you, you cannot move anything. <laughs> yes, true, you cannot true. allow your emotions to move you. Like I said, if you fall in love, it suspends, you know, that intellect part of that reasoning right. factor. So you must develop yourself emotionally, intellectually. Um, for us, most Nigerians, the baseline is at least a bachelor's degree. So be empowered academically. A, ba um, a, a, a degree holder is simply a, a trainable mind. Mm. So many of us, some people read medicine. But today they are moving uh, mountains in the business arena. Is yeah. that not so? Yeah, true. The researchers put aside their diploma, their degrees, their PhD, and we're all running the show in business. Amen. Amen. Now, yes. And so a woman must be um, emotionally, intellectually, physically mature to enter into marriage. But now remember, I talked about the three triangles and that I talk about money. You see, marriage is sweet. That's what I was about to say then. It's supposed to be sweet. But without money, marriage can be very bitter. Yeah. Can money, be. Can, money can be a major area of contention. So I beg of you, woman, as you discover talent. And that's why I said I wanted to end with the scripture in 2 Kings 4. I will open it. There were two phenomenal women in 2 Kings chapter 4. The scripture started with the widow of the sons of the prophets. The widow of the sons of the prophets was impoverished. Her husband was anointed. So he had his talent. He had his gifted. But he died in poverty. And mm. they had two children. The poverty became generational. Because the taskmasters, the, the loan shark, the silos came from their, their band of together. friends. They came to get them. And the woman cried to the prophet and said, Prophet, my husband, you know he was a son of the prophet. He loved God. Some of us love God. But we are not street savvy. Some of us love God. We have not discovered purpose. Some of us love God. We don't know how to talk dollar and pound sterling. We love God too much. We pray, pray, pray. We don't know how to do. So the man died anointed, spiritual, talented full of deposits because before god formed you remember you ordained you loaded with you with talent with concept ideas abilities graces that you must dispense to the world remember that your talent is for you to dispose it's not just for your own selfish it's, mm. it's satisfying to discover talents and discover destiny but it's even more gratifying when you can you know give it away Okay, so this woman, this woman's husband had died with his talent. Going back to what Miles Monroe said, the biggest tragedy is not death, but living a life living without purpose. So the man died without ever discovering the death of substance he carried. Now he died in poverty. Now they're coming after his son. The woman cried out, please, prophet, help me. Now we're about to wrap it up. When she cried out, the prophet gave a simple instruction. Said, what do you have in your house? Going back to what I told everybody earlier, what are you good at? What do you do flawlessly? What do you have in your house? This is your house, your temple. You are the temple Ooh. of the Spirit. So what do you have inside? You already have an offering inside. There's something, the treasure in jars of clay. You're a jar, an earthen vessel. You're carrying that treasure within. Discover that treasure. Mm. And you will discover empowerment. Now, that woman now obeyed the instruction. She said, in my house, we have a jar of oil, a bottle of anointing oil. Because that was the only thing they had. If it was cooking oil, they would have cooked with it. They would have exhausted it. It was sacred oil. Your oil is your treasure. The answer is for you in the day of trouble. Your oil is that which you have, that gift you have inside. It's your oil from God. Nobody can steal it from you. Mm. Nobody can take it from you. Mm. And that's the oil you trade to become big. You know what the prophet told her? He said, trade that oil, pay your debt, and live on the rest. 
That day she was launched into oil business. She borrowed vessels, said borrow vessel, not a few, borrow a lot. So imagine with me, if you will, if she borrowed 100 vessels, she's operating in level of hundreds. She borrowed a thousand vessels. She's operating in level, level of thousands. A thousand mm. she vessels. She's a millionaire. Mm. And so she sold the oil. She the, 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 the oil that came out of that that little treasure, that little mm -hmm. treasure. She sold it. She traded it. Are you trading with your talent? Because remember, the profiting comes from trading that gift. Mm. And the skillfulness will allow you to know how to trade it. Amen. Ooh. Now the woman paid off her debt and lived off the rest. And she's known for oil. The second woman is a woman of substance. And if you permit me, we have a woman of substance conference coming up in October in our ministry. And this is where the premises where this uh, conference is coming from. The Lord told me, start to empower women, raise women. A lot of women are clenching their teeth in marriage. I know men are here. Please uh, uh, pardon me. But you know, the, the the typical is that men go out to work. The women stay at home with the children. Or the women work part-time. Or work from home. Or try to juggle it. Because uh, the early years of the um, family, the capacity building years, the, 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 the majority of caregiving for children, nurturing, falls on the mothers. Mothers. So find ourselves at the receiving end of the, end. Of the Yes. We are, we are always the one, you know, having to sacrifice. And the woman is supposed to have a lot of say. I've seen women who stay at home and they have a lot of say because the man has understanding or they just have that vibe, you know, that understanding going on. But now a woman must be, can be empowered, even being a stay-home mom. Think outside of the box. Now the woman of Shunem, the Bible describes her as a notable woman. I told mm. you that about women. God loves women. So don't think, oh, why did God make it on purpose? Before when I didn't understand what the power of the woman is, be like, why did God make me a woman? I wish I was a man so that I can be in charge. You can see I have a very strong personality. I'm the type A, your type A personality, very strong. So I felt, you know, when I didn't understand the leadership aspect of me, I'll be like contending with it. Like, why is it that people misunderstand me when I open my mouth? I'm not trying to contend with it. I'm just being who I am. Yeah. I take the lead. I'm an imagine leader. Anywhere I show up, I take the leadership. Now, until I understood, you know, tempering it, Right. Speaking only, you know, I told you I had to develop my speaking skill. Speaking only when I'm asked, not giving only solicited advice, I was able to help myself not to get into a lot of trouble. Now, the woman, the Bible calls her a notable woman, a woman of substance. I beg of you, read it in different translations. This, this is this is second, hold on, second, in second King four, chapter four, chapter. from verse one. I'm, I'm already in maybe. Uh, verse 8, when I finished with the woman or uh, the widow of the sons of the prophet and I'm in the subsequent verses now maybe we're like verse 9 to 15 or there about the okay. woman of Strunen, that whole chapter is um, about her and the prophet Elisha and there's something impactful that same prophet who blessed the woman of the sons of the, the widow of the sons of the prophet was the same prophet who blessed this woman She they saw that it, it came from time to time through their city and she said this man is a true man of God Let's build him an upper chamber where he will rest. And mm. put a table and a chair and a bed there. So she furnished an apartment, a penthouse, so to say, for this man. man. And the man was like, what does she need? Because she was a woman of substance, she could afford to do that. You know, you and I can afford to sponsor kingdom projects, yeah. missions, minister yeah. to the poor, homeless, yeah. mm -hmm. destitute. She was a notable woman. But there's still a lack in her life. So just because you're empowered doesn't mean there may not be an area of your life. You can still be single and searching. You could be married and looking for children. So do not delay your empowerment or destiny until you have those physical things that make your picture look perfect. There was still something imperfect in her picture, despite the fact that the Bible calls her a woman of substance, a notable woman in the society. She was married to a wealthy man as well. Now, I'm going to close with this. She did something good. And then the man of God said, this a good turn deserves another. We must leave a tangible blessing for this woman. And they found out that she had no child. And she had a child. If you read subsequent you know, chapters of Second Kings, you see that not only was this woman rich in that chapter, she was rich for the rest of her existence. Wow. So now, treasure, bring it out. Own it. Pay it forward. And guess what? It will be a gift that keeps giving. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah to God be the glory. Woo! Please, put fire in the chat. Put hearts. Put this was 
you know when a genie keeps quiet that means i'm writing i'm trying to get everything you already know reverend Renny, thank you so much for this you yes, have blessed lives in here there's mm. something you said now that somebody just typed, typed in the chat that's it we talked about it yesterday this is it so your treasure your talent your empowerment really is a gift that keeps giving yes so in conclusion, I'm going to summarize it. She's already summarized. She's already concluded it, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to summarize it this way. Find, go to God, who's your maker. Yes. And find what your purpose is through prayer and listening. If you have to fast, you want to learn how to fast. She talked about her show. Thank you so much, everyone. She talked about her program, Coming Up Woman of Substance. In the comment, in the descriptions after here, we'll talk in the studio and we'll talk later. I would Put where you can reach her. She'll share that real quick with us. I told you it was 30 minutes. We're already at 15 minutes. It gets to one hour because there's so much to talk about. So it's going to God to ask for what your purpose is through prayer and seeking his face to guide you. And then she said, um, when you know your purpose, it's a gift that keeps giving. When you're empowered, when you're a man or a woman, in this case, she's talking about being and it's she, we are Christians here. So if you're not, find your way of how if whatever religion you are, there has to be a way to seek within you to find out. She said, What are you good at? What is the one thing you can do effortlessly? And that could be your treasure. That's your oil that you could use to pour out to bless others. Then she talked about the parable of the talents. You see, the one who had the one didn't have the wisdom to multiply. But the others did. And what did God say to all of them? Something, my, my, you, your reverend, thank yes, you, yes, yes. welcome, my, well, yes. so my he called the, servant, wanting, wanting. Yes, so he <laughs> called the one who buried his talent a wicked servant. Mm -hmm. So, no productivity, excuses, and all of those things is a proof of wickedness. God sees, judges it as wickedness. So, he said it came to call all of them, to give account of what they're done with their talents. So letting your talent waste is considered wickedness before God. Wow. So he called him a wicked servant. He said, yes, you're a master who reaps where you have not sown. So, you are very shrewd. He said, so you know I'm shrewd. I said, you couldn't have committed my talents to the bankers or to the borrowers, the loaners, so that you they'll make interest with it and you give me my money back with Compounding interest. Interest. Of compounding interest. interest. You know, that's what we work with. <laughs> yes. God actually is a businessman. Go look yes. at all the parables of Jesus talking about money. God is not shy about money. See, I'm not a pastor who shy to talk about money. I don't want your money. I can teach you how to make money. Have Ooh. the money. Please. Amen. Amen. I, I'm a woman of substance. Amen. I give. Amen. Now, the other servants who multiply their talents, he called them faithful servants. You have done well. You have been faithful over little. I will commit to your trust much. And you've been leader over 10 cities. That's for the one who got 10. And the other one, he said, you'll be leader over four cities, or, I believe. And then the last one, he, he went to out, out of darkness where there was wickedness, gnashing of teeth and weeping. Now, God rewards faithfulness. You must steward your talent, your gifting, your oil. You must give account for it. Wow. Yes, man. Did you guys hear that? Like, I have to go back to the show and even detail all the comments. But I was one, there's so many things you've said that hit me that you know how sometimes, and that's why I love doing this show. For me, I think my talent, I, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I think I'm a sort of a resource, but I think I'm also, I like to talk. I like to share. Like, once I find out something, I want to share. Mm. And there's this thing I like, I like about me where I don't want somebody leaving where I am being the same. Either I say something, I make you laugh or something. So I don't know what it's called, but I think I'm supposed to be a change agent. I think that's in whatever. So that, I found that out, but how to break it down to what a change agent means. And I know my dream is to be a transformational. This is a whole different show. To be a transformational speaker based on the things that I've gone through. I want to be a writer, all of that good stuff. I, 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 let me say, I don't want to be. I, I am a writer. Mm -hmm. But I've not been confident in myself to publish the things I've written and all of those good stuff. But because I believe one story, once the person's story changes another. 
Absolutely. While you're speaking with your story, you're able to change somebody. Right. And that's why I say get sense. Get sense, you know, in Nigeria, it means wisdom. The yes. wisdom you have shared on this platform today mm. is a gift that will continue to give. Yes. And you are welcome anytime to talk about any topic. But before we go, I cannot help but share, have you share your Woman of Substance um, conference. That way the audience knows, right? You guys listen, get your pen and listen. So when is it in October or in September? When is it? Okay, so um, um, by the grace of God, we'll be having our Woman of Substance conference. The Lord gave me this uh, mandate, um, January 2015. And at that time, it didn't make sense because we have what we call the Ignite Conference. Actually, we just had one in Leeds, United Kingdom um, in June. And we do it every quarter before COVID. And, you know, so this year I've been planning, we're supposed to do this conference in September. And I was praying, and the Lord said, no, I want you to do a Woman of Substance Conference. Right. The Woman of Substance Conference, you know, was a dream that I just put on the back burner because I was like, I'm not just called to women, I'm called to, 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 to the human, I'm, I'm called to humanity. And I don't want to start stratifying with gender. But I said, no, speak to women. Because, you know, women are home builders, they're nation builders. You know, they're very much overlooked. Teach women how to be empowered. Share your story. Share the story of the woman of Shunem. Share the story of the widow of the sons of the prophet. So there were two women, one notable, one wealthy, and there was one impoverished. But at the end of the day, God was the one that made the mark in both of their lives. And we could see mm. that the one that had substance, but had a need, a spiritual or something she couldn't do for herself, so, God did. And then the one that had the anointing, the oil, you know, and needed to, you know, make a mark in the marketplace or in the community. Yes, yes. God gave her the empowerment to do so. That's what the Woman of Substance Conference is about. It's going to empower you spiritually. You will be so you do, you will be filled with so much, you know. The, the, there will be several other speakers at the at the program. There will be people who attend to your physical need. Remember your your spirit, you have a soul, soul and, and body. A body. So we'll teach you how to take care of your body. You can see that this pastor does not smell. We'll teach you how to look good. Amen. How to Amen. make my <laughs> Amen. We'll also teach you how to enhance your spirit, man. How to own and to hone your skill your talent, your oil, to make it better, to make it a treasure that is desirable by all. Amen. Yes, and then, amen. you know, so spirit, soul, and body. And then how to think outside of the box. Yes. How to think entrepreneurially. How to trade your oil. It was the prophet that told the woman, go and trade. It was God who told the, those who got, got the talent, go and trade. Put it to good use. So you are going to trade. So I don't teach you how to trade. I don't trade mm. forex. I don't trade. We trade instruments. Financial literacy will teach you how to put your house in order. I used to be teach a you how to, to how to save your money, okay. how to earn, how to earn, and how to preserve it, and how to multiply it and pass it. How down. to multiply it and pass. So we're going to be teaching women how to be empowered. So you're going to be it's going to be all um, uh, encompassing by the grace of God, and it's by the grace of God. October 15th in the Atlanta metro area. I live in the Atlanta metro area. And we'll share the venue later. But okay. in case you want to follow our ministry. I was just going to say, share that where they can find you. So Nehemiah, just as it spells in the Bible, Nehemiah, if you know that spelling from the Bible, troop, T-R-O-O-P dot O-R-G is our website. And then on, is our, also our social media handle, the ministry handle on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on TikTok, just Instagram. And then my personal page is private. Because I do not like all kind of bombardment. Um, my personal page is Rev Renny, just as it's spelled here, R E V with my name Renny on Instagram. If you want to reach out, please do so. Follow me on Instagram, and we can connect from there. Thank you. Right. And then, where do we go to find your books at Amazon and put your on name Amazon. on? Yes. So find my book. She has Amazon. ten books, guys. Ten yes. books. So most of them are my personal testimony. The first one is you can be delivered. I got delivered from psychosomatic, you know, anxiety, blacking out, you know, fainting, depression, uh, dysthymic depression with agoraphobia. So when you're living in the house for seven years, you don't have money. You have a kind of anxiety issue going on. You, from you have challenges. <laughs> yes, a lot. So I had to learn how to get delivered. So the first book is you can be delivered. The second one is chosen fast. Remember I said I activated destiny by fasting. And then um, I think part to conceive, I had the space of um, a, a few years where I couldn't conceive and God showed me the secret during the fast. We fast every year, I believe a fasted life. And that book is about conceiving. And we've had so many testimonies 
out of that book alone, yeah. you know, uh, and, and I could go on and on. So just Google or search, you know, Google is a generic word for searching. On Amazon, search Reni Bankole, R-A-E-N-I, Nancy I, Bankole, and you see all the books pop up at you. And I believe that those books will, will bless you tremendously. In, oh in Jesus' name. <gasps> Where'd she go? All right, so while she's trying to come back on, thank you. Oh, that's where she is. It just blacked out for a second. I'm like, oh my god, we can't hear you. Wait, let me take you up and bring you back on one second. Let me see. I think that the, the, uh, we don't hear you anymore. We don't hear can you. Hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Perfect. All right. Sorry about that. I don't know why you went away. All right. So we are just at that time. Everybody's excited. People are saying they cannot wait for the conference. People say thank you so much, Ejeni and um, Reverend Renny. Amazing time here. Um, Vivian says thank you, Ejeni the Great. <laughs> Ejeni the Great for bringing such a powerful woman of God. People are saying whoop, whoop, whoop. We move. What else? And they're sharing and everything. We have to go back there. Thank you for being here because you cannot imagine what it's like. See, this is why I do this show. This is me. I love talking to people. I love bringing. Sometimes even me, when I'm advising people, I go back to my, to my, what do I call them? My, uh, I call them my oracle. <laughs> Vivian and China and to other people, I say, ah, see what I was thinking. That way I can be outside myself. But then you, you bring somebody else who can come and bring this thing to life. There's so much... I know we are one minute over, uh, well, 31 minutes over. There's so much you brought, but what I will leave everybody with is for all the women. My uncle is in the house out of praise. Okay, let me thank everybody. Thank you, Annabelle. That's my baby sister. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Chinaye, for being here. Uncle Sojay, thank you always. That's my cheerleading uncle. He hardly ever comes. He says, always a big, big sense getting sessions with the great Ejini. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. What I'll leave everybody with, whether you're a man or you're a woman, find your purpose. If you don't have one, what do they say? Then you're dying. If you're not living a purposeful life, then you're dying. Then you're a robot. Go to God through prayer. Like she said, she has books. You can fast. You can read. You can pray. Prayer is a conversation. Anytime you can pray about anything, but find your purpose, be empowered, let God use you so that you yourself, you're a gift that keeps giving. And if you have kids or you believe you want to have kids, guess what happens? You're multiplying that. Because she said one thing, maybe she forgot she said it. We are all going to give account. We have an assignment here. That's what a purpose is. What is your assignment? What are you sent here for? She said, uh, she asked some questions that I was, see, let me, let me tell you how I write. See, one, two, three, four, five pages <laughs> that I got out of here that I have to summarize in a page. I hope you have all been blessed as you leave here, be empowered, be that child of God that God can shake his head and say, I'm proud of that one. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you, Rev. Rennie. Tell somebody one thing. We're already out. Tell, tell, some, tell them one thing, a sentence. Tell them something, and then we can go, and then we can shut down. <laughs> okay, so the microphone is a little bit muffled on my side. I don't know. Oh, what. it is? But we can hear you clearly. You said what? We can hear you clearly. You can hear me clearly. Okay, but I can't. It's okay. okay. But um, I just want to thank you for bringing me to the show. It's such a privilege. And I pray that everyone who is on the journey of discovery, may you find all that God has deposited in you. Amen. May your oil come to the surface as you draw it out. Amen. My last word is Proverbs 25. It says, counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters. So you can interchange it with talent, mm. you know, power. The Bible mm. said there's a power at work in us. Oil in the heart of a man is like deep waters. Mm. It's a man of understanding draws it out. May you draw out that oil so that this generation will praise the God who sent you here. In mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. You could have been anywhere, but you are here to bless us and listen. 
say a prayer for Rev and her family, Reverend Rennie and her family. I say a prayer for everyone here. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here supporting me. As you've supported me, so would God meet you at every point of your needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm ending the broadcast.